We've got slightly different scenery this week, but it's got absolutely nothing to do with the video. I'm away from home looking after a sick relative. I'll explain more in the video description. However, this video is about something that I shot a while ago and I had on my laptop. I've managed to put together to show you now, and it's a thing called the Reading Edge, a Kurzweil reader. And here it is. It looks like a scanner, and that's because it is, but that's only part of it, because the other thing it does is this. Welcome to the Reading Edge, version 3.0, DeckTalk version 4.0. Yes, it can speak, and the reason for that is because this machine has been designed for blind people. Its purpose is to read printed documentation. So if, for example, you were to get a letter in the post that you couldn't see, all you have to do is open up the envelope, stick the letter on the top, press a couple of buttons, and it will read it aloud to you. They said I rap like a robot, so call me rap bot, but for me to rap like a computer, it must be in my jeans. I got a laptop in my back pocket. In fact, this one has more than a laptop inside. It's pretty much a full desktop PC from the early 90s. And the language information for it is stored on a PMCIA IAC C C I I C card. You could also attach this to a computer as well as accessories like a braille keypad. So someone who was blind and deaf would still be able to access the information on printed documentation. I'll just show a few photos to give you a quick look around inside, but this really isn't my area of expertise. So I've got nothing to add to this other than there's no hard drive in here. It's all solid state storage. Now this particular machine was manufactured by Xerox in the 1990s, but the origins of these devices go all the way back to the 1970s and the inventor Ray Kurzweil. In fact, I think the best thing to do is to let the Kurzweil reader explain its origins itself by reading Ray's own account. In 1974, computer programs that could recognize printed letters, called Optical Character Recognition, OCR, were capable of handling only one or two specialized type styles. I founded Kurzweil Computer Products, Incorporated that year to develop the first OCR program that could recognize any style of print, which we succeeded in doing later that year. So the question then became, what is it good for? Like a lot of clever computer software, it was a solution in search of a problem. I happened to sit next to a blind gentleman on a plane flight, and he explained to me that the only real handicap that he experienced was his ability to read ordinary printed material. It was clear that his visual disability imparted no real handicap in either communicating or traveling. So I had found the problem we were searching for. So he set about developing a machine that could read aloud printed text. Now you can imagine this was a bit of a tall order for mid-1970s computer tech, but by 1976 he was able to produce a machine that achieved what he wanted. After Kurzweil had announced the machine, it became a bit of a celebrity, appearing on various TV shows in the US, and on one occasion it read out Walter Cronkite's sign-off at the end of the evening news. It also made an appearance on the Today Show, which is how Stevie Wonder heard about it, and he ordered two machines for himself, and over time became a bit of an ambassador for the device, appearing in various promotional videos about the product. Then again, in the 1970s, you'd need to have Stevie Wonder type money to be able to afford one of these machines. Even by the time this one came out in 1979, the price was being quoted then as 80,000 UK pounds, which would have converted across to approximately $160,000 in 1979. And with inflation nowadays, that would be worth $616,000. In 1980, Kurzweil Computer Products was purchased by Xerox, who were particularly interested in in the OCR software that Kurzweil had developed. However, they did continue making various iterations of the reading machines, and the one that I've shown you came out in 1992, and at that point cost around 6,000 US dollars, which, while substantially cheaper than the earlier machines, still put it beyond the budget of most individuals. So these were more commonly purchased by institutions. Now, whenever in the past I've shown something that's been designed for blind or partially sighted people, a lot of the comments will ask why 
aren't the controls labelled up in Braille? Well, just ask yourself the question, if you went blind tomorrow, would you be able to read Braille? The answer is probably not. Why restrict something to people that have a certain skill? Braille is very difficult to learn. A lot of people are just never able to get a grasp on it. So, a simpler solution is to make a set of controls that everyone can use. They can be used by sighted or partially sighted people, and anyone else could identify them from their shape and location, as well as voice feedback. These are the primary keys for using the reading edge. The left key starts or stops scanning. The bottom middle key starts or stops speaking. The bottom right key is the help key. For information on any key, first press the help key. Then press and hold down the key you want described. So here's a quick example of something that you might want to read. This is the paperwork that comes inside a box of medication. Patient with long-standing type 2 diabetes and heart disease or previous stroke who were treated with pioglitazin and insulin experienced the development of heart failure. Now, there's a friend of mine called Andre who has a YouTube channel. He's blind, and in one of his videos, he showed how he's able to comprehend a computer reading text at a rate that is way beyond anything I could understand. So I'm sure if he had one of these, he'd be turning the speed all the way up to the top. Let's just have a listen to what it sounds like with that dial turned all the way up. Now, taking nothing away from this device at all, it is very much a product of its time, though. It's a 1990s piece of technology. So it's really a quite heavy desktop computer mixed with a heavy scanner. And while it's classed as being portable, it's only really portable in the sense that you could pick it up. It's not something that you'd want to carry around for very long. Although I do believe they made carrying cases for these back in the day so people could take them to class. Uh, rather than, than me with this one. If you were just to try and pick it up on its own though, there's no carrying handle on it, and the keyboard, whilst it does attach magnetically to the bottom of it, it immediately falls off and falls on the floor. And it's quite difficult to get used to the speed of this thing, because of course the processing power we're talking about is quite limited, and it's doing quite a bit. It's scanning in a page, and then it's trying to optically recognize it. So after the scan process has taken place, you do have to wait a couple of minutes or longer, depending upon how much text is on that page, before it starts reading it out. So you have to get used to a lot of sitting around and waiting for this thing to do something. Finally, he used a time-honored method of repairing delicate electronic equipment and Right, so it stopped reading there, and I think it could have done with announcing that it had reached the end of the page and to insert the next page to scan. In places, it's not quite as user-friendly as you'd expect something like this to be nowadays. And the scanner could also do with being easier for a non-sighted person to locate the paper accurately on, the glasses too flush with the top. But anyway, after scanning a page, it goes silent. However, holding the help button tells you what it's currently working on. Page queued for scanning. Recognition in progress. 425 words seen. 145 words completed. So it does quite a bit of processing after the scanning has taken place. But then, all of a sudden, after announcing that you could scan another page, it then starts reading the previous one that it's processed. Ready for next page. Slammed the reading machine against a table. From that moment, it worked just fine. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm just reflecting on my experience here. It's a million times better than somebody not being able to read a piece of paper. I just feel some of the user interface and ergonomics could have benefited from another round of user input. But no doubt, if you'd used one of these all the time, you'd very quickly get used to working around its quirks. And finally, because I'm not used to it, I found that understanding this did become quite difficult at times. It's fine when you've got a nice plain page of text, but once you start adding in multiple columns and unusual punctuation, it really does start to sound quite alien. Left parenthesis, used to treat high blood pressure, right parenthesis, asterisk can get tense in converting enzyme, left parenthesis, ACE, right parenthesis, inhibitors, left parenthesis used however i think my machine is suffering from a few issues due to old age for example here is the same paragraph of text that i've scanned in once but i've got to read out twice and just listen to what happens on the second attempt 
he decided that the best application of this technology would be to create a reading machine which would allow blind people to understand written text by having a computer read it to them out. He decided that the best application of this technology would be to I D L D I do E L I I I I D I I I I V V I L I B I V I U A L J I I L U I E U E L I I U written text by having a computer read it to them out. So yes, it's either gone slightly mad, or perhaps the scanner is failing to properly get a good image of the text. Here is another nugget of gibberish. To provide him with his own reading machine, so we turned the I I period I I I F I I live did V V L V I comma I V V Louil to I I asterisk it live ill ill new reading machine by his side. But yes, as you'll have seen perhaps from previous videos, I'm always interested in the work that was done with technology to make things more accessible for more people. This was a revolutionary and groundbreaking piece of technology, but it was a very early example of this particular type of device. And in a future video, I want to show you some more recent takes on the same concept. But yeah, from a, a sunny Scarborough, I just want to say thanks for putting up with any technical issues, because I know there are going to be a few with this video, with me not having all my usual equipment with me. But uh, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Something's wrong, I can feel it. I'm beginning to feel like a rap god. Rap god, all my people from the front to the back nod. Something's wrong, I can feel it. We're in trouble, big trouble. I, I, Y, V, I, 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 dash, 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 dash. Something's wrong.